Yeah, but now you're in NCIS. It's like iconic. It's going to run for 77 seasons. It seems like. Yes. <laughs> Like how was the like what would like where were you at when you first got the announcement like hey I'm going to be in NCIS? Where was I? Well, I was in LA. Uh, I just moved back because I I quarantined in New Jersey for most of the time with my parents, and so eventually we were like, okay, we got to go back to LA. Uh, so did the cross country drive and got back to LA, and I was in the middle of fixing up the the house that I was living in, and then I got the call to audition and um. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. I had no idea that season 19, which was last year, and then now season 20 of NCIS would turn out turn out to be a dream job. I cannot describe all the ways in which I love this job and I love this cast and this crew. And the fans have been so lovely and so welcoming. And it I think that was the scariest thing about coming on to season 20. Look, I, I did Hawaii 50. And I came on on season 10 and I was really scared because, because that is a rabid fan base. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is going to be sink or swim here. And they were absolutely lovely to me. But then you come on to NCIS, which is 20 years. People grew up with this show. They watched the show with their mom. I'm one. I'm one. I am oh. one of those people. I mean, okay. So, so <laughs> it's not like this little blip in their life where they're like, oh, no. you know, once upon a time I watched the show. They're like for 20 years every week i watch the show i am invested i know these characters they make me feel good they are part of my life so to suddenly like kind of interject into that um was daunting and uh but i feel like the fans again have just been so welcoming and so kind and you know i know they miss their favorites and it's hard with Harmon gone and you know i personally also miss uh uh, Dinozo and, and Ziva. So, you know, like I, I get where everybody's coming from that being said, they've, they've stayed true and they're still on board for the ride. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. I'm one of those kids that my mom made us watch NCIS, Law and Order, <laughs> all those good shows, even though we want to watch something, do I know we're watching this? And then we like, we first were like, man, whatever. And then we started watching it. Okay. We actually like this show, but like, <laughs> I know, but, it sucks you in, right? Yeah, just like uh, it feels like the show, like watching the show, it goes by so like fast. Like, how long does it take to film an episode? I, like watching the show, it feels like it just goes by like. like um, quick. Well, I think the show goes by so, goes by so fast, and I think this is why NCIS has been such such a success over the years. Is that um, between Harmon and the original producers and the cast and everybody uh, and crew, they managed to find a formula where there's just enough drama to keep you invested, but at the same time, it's character driven and you love these characters so much. So you kind of really don't care about what the crime is. It's just an added bonus. You want to see the team interact and you want to see what shen shenanigans they get up to. And by the end of the show, you feel like you've solved the case, but you also end up just feeling good watching this show. And I don't think there are too many procedurals out there that leave you feeling good at the end of the show. And I feel like that's what a lot of people want. They want to tune in. They want to watch their favorite characters do some crazy stuff and then just feel good at the end of the day and go back to their lives that they love living. So I feel like NCIS has really um, hit the gold mine when it comes to that. Um, we take eight days to shoot an episode. So the crew call in the morning is normally 7 a.m. And then we normally wrap by 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. So it's a typical day, typical show. I like I know like all like the OG characters are like gone now. Like how does it well, like Sean Murray? Do, we, we still gotta hold out. <laughs> and we, yeah. got, we got Ducky. Yeah, yeah, we too. We still got Ducky. Um, do you feel any pressure like just to carry on the show? Like the like does like the cast like, oh, do you guys feel any pressure just carry on that legacy? Yes and no. I think there's something there's something wonderful about coming on in season 20, which is unheard of, uh, where you go, if the show <laughs> ends, it's probably not because of me. It's probably more because it's season 20 and you lost all your original or most of your original cast. But at the same time, um, the show is still going strong. It's still the number one show in the world. I don't know. I feel like I magically jumped onto this golden train. So my, I think my job is to just not derail it. No, that's true. 
Yeah. Like I feel like it's one of the like Law and Order too. Like those shows, great Grey's Anatomy. Like those shows can go for however long you want to. But how long do you see yourself wanting to be a part of it? Um, I don't know. I I just I'm kind of just along for the ride and and just seeing where it goes. So if it goes for two more years, yeah, I'm totally on board. If it goes for ten more years. I might not want to be on for 10 years, but then again, ask me in 10 years. So <laughs> you, you never know, like you never know where life takes you and how, so it's hard to kind of say, but yes, would I like to, would I like to see the show go for four or five more years? Yes, for sure. I think, um, I feel like there are other platforms where the show, and I think it's because the writing, the writing has stayed creative and it's stayed fresh and it's really kept these characters alive and the spirit of the show alive so I feel like if they if CBS wanted to they could keep it on for 20 more years or they could move it over to Paramount plus I feel like there are so many options and I feel like the fan base would follow because that's how much they love this show yeah I know like what was your favorite episode shooting um season 20 I know it comes out soon uh what have, what have we shot so far um well, I can't tell you about it because it hasn't aired. I can tell you about season 19. Okay, what was your favorite episode in season 19? Um, my favorite uh, episode was uh, the one with Brian Dietzen, who plays uh, Jimmy Palmer, where we're running through the woods and we have that cabinet scene where I'm pulling a bullet out of his thigh slash butt. That was a lot of fun. I know. Oh, speaking of um, Dr. Palmer, I know like him and Jessica. Like, What can we expect from those two um, this upcoming season? I think you can expect to see two people trying to navigate a work relationship and um, what it means to have a work relationship, what it means to try to be a professional in this business. Uh, I know the, both of them have had previous relationships. Um, you know, unfortunately for Jimmy, his wife passed. And then there, we've alluded to Jessica having a past relationship that wasn't that great. Uh, so I think you get to see some of those things come to life and uh, you get to see the two of them deal with it and how they how it is that they deal with it within a workplace. So fans can expect to see a more of a backstory from Jessica. I know everybody wants to see that. Oh yeah, you get to see a backstory. You get to see a lot of a backstory. I think there's going to be, yeah, yeah. You, you get to full on see the back story you will understand this entire thing when you see it <laughs> it will all make sense to you I know like I know you didn't get to really work with Mark as much or you know but is there any way like people because a lot of people I don't know if you've seen online they're like hey maybe he'll come back for season 20 and I saw like executive producer kind of hit at something like what are the odds of people see him Gibbs back I, I personally have no idea. It's above my pay grade. Um, you know, I've, I worked six episodes with Mark. He was absolutely wonderful and delightful to me. He made me feel so welcome on the set. He was the first person who called me. I think it was like an hour after I was cast. He called me to welcome me to the show. And the first day I showed up, he went out of his way multiple times that day while he was working to follow me around to make sure that I knew where everything was. If I had any questions, he tried introducing me to the entire cast and crew within one day. It's a lot of people. <laughs> So he was wonderful. That being said, I'm one of those people that's like, is he coming back? So I, I would love to see him come back, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I know that he's earned his um, retirement though, whether it's temporary or permanent, he's worked a very long career and being on a procedural that shoots usually anywhere from 22 to 26 episodes a year for 20 years is a grueling task, especially when your days are 12 to 14 hour days. So I, I, I have all the respect for the world for him. If he decides, you know what, I'm just kind of out. I'm happy in my retirement. You guys continue with the legacy. I'm just going to produce. So if that's his deal, then great for him. If his deal is he's like, I'm bored and I want to come back. Yay for us. So <laughs> what's like the best advice you have received from him? I know it's like a short amount of time, but was there any advice that he gave you? Like, oh, yes. man, I'm going to carry this on for the rest of my career. Uh, he basically said to keep pushing uh, to in, in, in his own way. And I, I feel like it was very much uh, remnants of his football days of keep pushing, never settle. 
just make sure you don't get comfortable. So, because comfort usually leads to laziness, whether it's deserved or not. And then it leads to apathy and then it leads to stagnation. So I think the whole message of fight for your character, fight for your part, fight for your roles, fight for the show, fight for your career kind of was said multiple times in the six episodes that I worked with them. Okay. Okay. I like it. Uh, what, what's, oh, what's like your personal hopes for um, just this upcoming season? My personal hope is to find out more about her. I'm kind of with the audience where I'm like, I don't know who my girl is. Like I, I know little bits of her, um, but a lot of times I read something and I'm like, oh, this is who she is. And I find out six weeks before the audience does. So I'm kind of on the same journey where, you know, I, I make decisions about who I think she is or uh, the clues that I've been given so far. But then all of a sudden you get a nice chunk in the episode and you're like, ha this is something solid and substantial. One of my favorite moments was when um, I had let them know that because I'm half Asian and I speak Mandarin, I let the producers know that. And normally what has been the case is they've gone, that's cute, moving on. And for the first time, they're like, oh, let's have you speak Mandarin on the show. Let's make your father Asian. Let's have you speaking to your father on the phone. And then I asked if we could, if I could have a good relationship with my father instead of, you know, like this tumultuous one. And they were like, yeah we don't have good relationships on the show. <laughs> Let's do it. So um, the fact that they leaned into my heritage, the fact that they leaned into the diversity of it all, um, you know, that was a nice moment to kind of be like, oh, so I have a father. He is Chinese. He speaks Mandarin. I speak Mandarin. He's stationed abroad. It just kind of gives you a lot to, to play with mentally all of a sudden instead of kind of being like, I have no idea who my parents are. So little things like that kind of geek me out. <laughs> 